to me, water is a big thing. You know, hills, trees, and water. My wife and I both joke about that, but it's not really a joke. It's uh, it's a tranquil part of life, and I think having that water uh, and a couple times a week, my wife and I will go walk the river trail, and I mean, to have a six-mile trail uh, like we have is just is, is a huge amenity. That is Brad Barnett, the CEO and president of the Kerrville Chamber of Commerce. In this episode of the Hill Country Podcast, I visit with Brad about what brought him to Kerrville, his work as CCO, and the work of the Kerrville Chamber of Commerce, including the State of the City Luncheon Thursday. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back for another episode, and today I have with me Brad Barnett. Brad is with the Kerrville Chamber of Commerce, and they got a big event coming up, so I asked Brad if I could sit down and visit with him, talk about the Kerrville Chamber of Commerce, what he does, what it does, and talk about the uh, upcoming uh, event. So, Brad, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Brad, could you tell us a little bit about your professional background and how you got to Kerrville? Uh, I worked for the Midland Chamber of Commerce for nine years. Uh, growing up in Kentucky, that's really a desert experience being out there. Uh, still have a lot of good friends, uh, but while I was in Midland, I oversaw the construction of the new Bush Convention Center. I was over the uh, Convention Visitors Bureau, which the Chamber managed. Uh, my wife and I had visited uh, the Hill Country, just had fallen in love with it. So when this uh, position came open with the Kerrville Area Chamber, uh, we jumped on it and uh, I've been here about 15 months. What's your role? Uh, I am the president and CEO. And uh, let me just turn a little bit about uh, Kerrville and really Kerr County because one of the things I learned when I moved here, frankly, was stunned to find out how big Kerr County is. I don't know if it's bigger than Rhode Island, but it's <laughs> awful close. But could you tell us a little bit about uh, Kerrville and then uh, the broader or wider Kerr County that you serve as well? Uh, Kerrville population wise is about uh, 23, 24,000 people uh, versus Kerr County being about 53,000. Uh, but like you say, the Kerr County area is just, it's very broad, very large, and especially very long if you're looking at it on a map. Um, and so, you know, roughly half of the county's population being in the city, but I think there's going to continue to be growth, uh, obviously, in the county uh, moving forward. So let me ask you, uh, and then I will chime in with, with my answer to the same question. What makes Kerrville so special for you? Just the size of the community. Uh, it's a, We have a lot of amenities for a community our size, having come from a community five times larger that didn't have nearly the amenities, um, but also being close enough to a San Antonio to, uh, you know, shop there in 45 minutes or be on the river walk in an hour so it's that best of both worlds you don't have to drive in a big city all the time uh, but you're close enough to access uh, that and just personally uh, I'm a diehard kayaker and when you're in Midland out in the desert there's not a lot of opportunities to do that you're two three hours each way uh, to get in the water and here I can throw the boats uh, in the back of my truck and be on the water in 20 30 minutes well that We'll hold off on my answer to that because you have now raised the specter of the Guadalupe River, which I suppose is one of the reasons I'm here. But tell us about the Guadalupe, what it means to Kerrville, Kerr County, and just what it means to you. It's to me, water is a big thing. You know, hills, trees, and water. My wife and I both joke about that, but it's not really a joke. It's uh, it's a tranquil part of life, and I think having that water uh, and a couple times a week, my wife and I will go walk the river trail, and I mean, to have a six-mile trail uh, like we have is just is, is a huge amenity, uh, and applaud the city for doing that. I know anytime you embark on a project like that, people tend to, well, why are we spending money on that? But it's a quality of life issue, and to be able to take lunch, you know, take your lunch hour and go do a mile walk along the river and watch the ducks, it's just it's very relaxing. So we love it. So as most people who've listened to this podcast series know, the reason I'm here is because I went to Camp Stewart as a boy and just fell in love with the hill country, and I fell in love with the Guadalupe River, which uh, runs through Camp Stewart. And there's a bluff on one side of uh, the river at Camp Stewart called Joy Bluff, which I still have fond memories of. But as the Guadalupe uh, is, it's really a big stream in that part of Kerr County, which is near Hunt, and it becomes a real river here in Kerrville and uh, it's I would say even central to the to the life 
uh, of the city and town as it's grown up. So, and it's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, we even are lucky enough to have a Starbucks on the river. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I text people, I'm at Starbucks, here's my view. And it's, it's uh, absolutely just fabulous. Uh, and I want to add a couple of other things. One is, uh, I grew up in a small town, I grew up in Bryan, Texas. And uh, this is as friendly a place as I've ever been. Uh, the people here are uniformly friendly. I've been called things I have never been called. For instance, uh, I was called a pumpkin. A lady said pumpkin uh, at the dry cleaners. I had not been called pumpkin uh, since I was quite young. But um, the uh, the other thing, though, is uh, I spent the last 40 years of my life in Houston, and obviously a very different experience. But here I'm able to kind of see – the individual businesses and the individual attractions and it, you're certainly not overwhelmed but you're absolutely right the quality of life whether you want to go hear a, a play hear music uh, contemporary music symphony music choir music religious services of all denominations uh, your uh, the outdoor life is is just fabulous um, uh, within uh, you know lots of different restaurants with different tastes for people and then a, a kind of a vibrant um, cultural scene. Uh, one of my favorites was the chalk exhibit, where people actually, you know, drew chalk drawings uh, on one of the local um, plazas that was just fabulous. And it was people from all over the world had come for that event. And so the, the breadth and scope of what's available here has really uh, also surprised me. What are some of the annual events, uh, now that you've been here a year, that uh, you've enjoyed? Well, Chalk Fest was one. When I first heard about it, it's like you were thinking, okay, is it just going to be a bunch of kids drawing with chalk, which is, there is that element. But some of the artists, it's just an, an amazing um, thing to watch. And haven't really gotten to do any large events, but like the Callow Theater, uh, you know, Callow Foundation is, you know, a huge supporter of uh, the arts and to have a facility like that in a town our size is just great um, it's I don't know that it really falls under art but we end up doing a lot of meetings at places like the Croc Center so I mean to have some of these facilities to, to bring people together um, obviously just maybe not events but you know all the the wine festivals and I'm kind of a craft beer nerd so places like Pint and Plow or uh, I always love going over and saw Jeremy the other day, stopped by, had some a beverage and uh, lunch. Um, I know we do Easter Fest, our leadership, Kirk County, um, puts that on, and we weren't able to do it for, I think, the past two years because of COVID, so we'll be doing that here in a few months. Um, first time, uh, first week here, I was looking upstairs and realized, okay, why is there a giant Easter bunny head? It's like, oh, okay, it's the Easter bunny for our Easter Fest event, so as long as I don't have to be the rabbit. Um, but uh, the livestock show uh, that's early in the year, usually January or February, uh, this year they've kind of broken it up because of COVID, so I think they held it in three or four locations, but used to, uh, Kerrville was the site for probably eight or nine counties to come here. So hopefully we can get all of that back. The, um, uh, let me turn now to the Chamber of Commerce, and if you could tell us a little bit about the Chamber, how long has it been around, and really what's your your day-to-day -day, uh, role as the President and CEO of the Chamber? Uh, chamber was started in 1922, so we're celebrating 100 years this year. Um, I get, like I said, I've been here just a little over 14 months uh, in this position. So last year came in, we developed a new logo, a new strategic plan. Uh, I'm really big on a strategic plan, helps us focus on what we need to be doing and not get distracted by other things that may be fun but not mission critical. Uh, but the Chamber is a 501c3 nonprofit. We're a membership organization. There's a lot of people that think Chambers get money directly from the city, and we do not. Uh, that, that really comes from America's probably the... Uh, odd nation out. Most other nations, their chamber is directly supported by the, usually the federal government. I know in Midland we work with the Turkish Chamber of Commerce, and I mean they are an arm of the Turkish government. Uh, and it was a hard for them to get around, you guys are, you don't get federal money, you don't get state money. No, we don't. It's membership dues, and then the events that we put on is, is how we support uh, our mission. So what, um, what is the mission? 
make sure I say this correctly because again we've had it about six months but really the mission is to strengthen promote and serve our business community uh, we wanted to keep that simple then our vision statement when I got here the vision statement was literally a paragraph it's like okay that's that's too complicated and again being from Kentucky readings uh, was an elective that I didn't take so uh, but our vision is to create a vibrant prosperous community through business leadership to ensure aspirations become reality in other words, we want to make sure the business community is taking that lead. And I think that's always the challenge because we know growth is going to come, especially you know, we're in that corridor with Austin, San Antonio. Uh, it's going to come, but if we can manage the growth, because if you don't manage it, then we lose a lot of the elements that make the Hill Country a special place to live. So uh, that's always uh, an important thing because Austin, uh, to some degree, San Antonio has grown so quick. Um, it's it's been hard to keep up. So who who are the members of the Chambers of Commerce, or it is as wise as the breadth and scope of Kerrville? Uh, it's it's everybody. Uh, we're hovering right around 820 to 830 members. Uh, Pre-COVID, we were I think pushing a thousand uh, before I got here, but obviously. COVID has taken a dramatic hit on a lot of businesses. So many businesses that actually have gone out. Uh, but we've really been working with new businesses that come into the community uh, to get them on board with the chamber, um, just to kind of let them know, hey, here's what we do, which includes um, at legislative advocacy. You know, we have those relationships, and to me that's a big thing is having the relationship with our city council people, our, our county commissioners. So if there's a proposed legislative piece that's coming up, we can either support or oppose it and tell them, you know, our 820 members don't like this because it's bad for business because this or we really support this um, and sometimes it's just good to be a supporter of our city council because elected officials at any level tend to uh, get criticism over everything that they do so it's I think good for them and that chair to go okay no we, we really like what you're doing and uh, we're going to support it. Uh, that's an interesting way to phrase it, uh, reading the newspaper. I've certainly seen criticism uh, at city council meetings uh, in Kerrville, so the citizens are not afraid to, to speak their mind. But could you turn to some of the uh, uh, resources that the chamber makes available to its membership, some of the outreach you have? You have a wide variety of training programs. Uh, you have speakers come in. But could you just talk about the resources available to chamber members? Some of the basic, uh, and again, we have different levels, but uh, the ability to do e-blast, we have, I think, about 3,500 people on our uh, email list. So you, depending on your level, you get X number of those e-blasts. And then if you want to go above and beyond, you can pay for that. One of the things we did last year is when I got here, there's a digital sign uh, on the street in front of the chamber. The chamber did not own that sign. And I'm not a fan of having our logo and name on something that I don't have control over. Just uh, So we did purchase that from the owner. And so now if you're a chamber member, you can go through us and put an ad on there for, um, we have 10 ads, so you get a six second impression uh, once a minute. Uh, and we run from 6 a.m. to midnight. So I forget how many impressions that is, but it's quite a bit. Uh, so for $250 a month. Um, so it's a way for us to offer some good advertising above and beyond the digital um, e-blast. We do a digital newsletter that, again, goes out to about 3,500 people every week. Uh, so it's just really kind of promoting our local businesses. One thing we did a test run of last year, we did a couple of these. We're getting ready to ramp it back up, was what's called CEO on the go. Uh, so I go out um, and work for about three hours from a member business. Uh, when I show up, we do a Facebook Live. kind of helps being a video producer in a past life, so uh, using some software and just kind of getting them some attention and uh, getting people to come out and meet me. Because even though I've been here 14, 15 months, we have a big community, so there's still a lot of our members and a lot of the community at large that I haven't had a chance to sit down and meet with. So that's kind of kills two birds with one stone. You know, that was probably my first introduction to the chamber was actually seeing one of those CEOs on the go, and I thought really uh, thought that was very innovative 
uh, for you to be able to do that. And I didn't know at that point about your video background. Now I do after doing a little research on you for this podcast, but it makes perfect sense now. And uh, it's got to be hugely popular. Yeah, we've uh, got a list of probably four or five people that want to do that over that. We could probably do two a month if my schedule permitted. And, uh, you know, if it does, we'll do two. That's why I never, I didn't want to say when we did it, it's got to be just one a month. And if you don't get in, it's, uh, we want to, we want to be responsive to members. Um, And I think that's important because we are here to respond to their needs. And one of the things that jumps to my mind is we do a business expo uh, the first weekend in August out at the Youth Event Center. Uh, we've usually partnered, so the night before is a preview show, and it's one of the first Friday wine shares. Bring a bottle of wine and a glass, and you get to uh, try different wines. We are planning to add a job fair uh, component to the expo this year because a lot of businesses do that anyway. You stop by the booth, hey, we're hiring, but we're wanting to work with the uh, Texas Workforce Commission uh because again, they've got a lot of resources and they're one of our tenants because we own uh, the building that they're in right out in our parking lot. So to partner with them, um, because that's one of our biggest challenges right now is employees and housing. And that really is not unique to Kerrville, that is nationwide, but we're trying to figure out some solutions. So we've got an upcoming event, I hope I have this right, the State of the City event. Uh, Could you tell us a little bit about that as well? Uh, the Chamber's partnered with the city for probably four or five years to do a State of the City uh, luncheon, and it's really a chance for the mayor to do sort of his State of the City. So Mayor Blackburn is not running for re-election, so this will be his final uh, State of the City presentation. But then uh, E.A. Hoppy, who's our city manager, will be going a little more in-depth for where's the city been, where's the city going. Uh, so the Chamber actually produces the event. Um, the city's providing the content so I think that working relationship is really good that we have with the city because if if the city and chamber aren't going in the same direction that's always uh, a huge red flag for me because it's okay one of us is going in the wrong direction so we make sure that communications on par and meeting with the mayor council members and the city staff on a regular basis how about the hill country economic summit which is upcoming in March could you tell us a little bit about that Yeah, this is, I think, the sixth year we've done that. Brian Bowers, our uh, past chair of the chamber, um, who uh, was on the chamber in the Bryan College Station area when he was there before he moved here, um, they did a similar event. So when we started that, we've generally had, at least four of the years, we've had somebody from Texas A&M School of Realty uh, as one of the speakers, and uh, we have one this year as well, uh, Luis forgetting his last name Uh, but uh, so it's really a half-day event we've got a couple of panel discussions in the morning then the real estate expert our keynote this year is uh, former Olympic bobsledder Uh, he speaks a lot to chambers around the country Uh, unfortunately with the Olympics going on I don't think he's going to bring a bobsled with him uh, nor would I want the snow that goes with it if you're going to actually do that so um, but Johnny Quinn um, is I think it'll be a good motivational presentation, but also his experience speaking to chambers again around the nation of, yeah, some of the issues we're facing, like with workforce, it's a challenge. Everybody's facing it, and hopefully maybe throw out a few creative suggestions we haven't thought of to solve the problem. So as we turn toward uh, looking at the future, 2025 or down the road even further, where do you see uh, the business growth in Kerrville and Kerr County coming from? I think one thing is hopefully we'll continue to have some manufacturing growth because like James Avery, um, uh, we've got all plastics, box tanks, so some of these larger manufacturers, uh, but one of the newer ones is the aerospace sector that the Kerr EDC has developed um, with Kildare uh, Mountain Manufacturing. Uh, I think that will be phenomenal. Just some of the projects they're working on and some of the projects that they've got bids in uh, at the national level for defense contracts. It's exciting that if they get those. Um, and what's nice is where you've got one of the key members from Kildare Mountain, you know, grew up here. Again, she's graduated from Tyvee. Um, so, you know, Boeing, where you've got uh, offices out of San Antonio and the whole Texas area, they're really excited about some of the manufacturing being local versus uh, North or South Dakota and then sending it down where they can have some more hands-on or easier input. So 
I can see the aerospace sector really growing a lot. And I know um, Gil Salina that uh, runs our e- EDC has got a lot of experience with that sector when he worked down in the Valley. So we're lucky to have Gil here. So what do you say to the new business owner or the, even the old business owner who's not a chamber member? Why should they join the Kerrville Chamber of Commerce? We're stronger together um, than we are apart. And again, with if you go back to the advocacy, uh, if I go talk to a legislator, talk to somebody in Austin and say we represent 820 businesses, that's great. If we were up to 1,000, then that's even better uh, to be part of the chamber. You know, one of the other things is for your business, it's the business-to-business networking. We do monthly uh, business after-hour mixers. Actually, a couple of those are breakfast, but uh, at least one monthly mixer. And just to watch people get stuff done, and I usually run into five or six people that, hey, I've had you on my list to talk to about XYZ. Uh, so you really do get a lot of work done at those uh, mixers. Plus, it's just nice to hang out with people, have a beverage. We have one next Tuesday. We used to do them Thursday. We've moved them to Tuesday uh, at the Dole Center. Um, they've done a lot of renovations last year, so we're going to do a ribbon cutting and a mixer. The mixer starts at 515 on Tuesday. So I always encourage people to come out. If you're not a chamber member, come out. Uh, as we say, come kick the tires, get to know us a little bit, see what we're about, and um, you know, network. So, Brad, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time for this episode. But before we leave, if anyone wanted more information on the Kerrville Chamber of Commerce or to follow up with you on any of the topics you've touched on, what would be the best way to do so? Uh, KerrvilleChamber.biz is the new website we launched. So just KerrvilleChamber.biz. Or they're welcome to reach out. We're at 1700 Sydney Baker Suite 100 beside Acapulco. So you're welcome um, to just stop in and talk to us or the phone number and all all of our emails are on the website too. So uh, reach out with any questions. Well, Brad, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to visit with me and I look forward to continuing this conversation. All right, thanks so much. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Hill Country Podcast. I'm going to link to the Museum of Western Art in the show notes, and it will have full information on these fabulous upcoming exhibits. I hope that you will check it out if you live in the Hill Country. And if you don't live in the Hill Country, I hope you'll come and visit us at our number one tourist attraction in Kerrville, the Museum of Western Art. If you have a story you would like to tell and you live in the Hill Country, I hope you will contact me. I want to tell the stories of the people, places, and things that make the Hill Country the most unique part of Texas. I hope you will join me in this exploration of love. Thanks so much for listening.